Senator Lindsey Graham is a Republican and a member of the Senate Armed Services and the Senate Budget Committee. And Sarah, good morning to you. Good morning. What are we to make of this? What do you make of I think, well, I think it's pathetic politics. I think our commander in chief is sitting on the sidelines trying to avoid a problem rather than solve it. And the Republican Party has its fingerprints all over this problem. What is the problem? When the super committee failed to, to achieve $1.2 trillion in cuts over the next decade, the sequester, which in Latin means dumb politicians destroying defense, the penalty clause called sequester says, if you fail super committee, we're going to take $600 billion out of the defense department as a punishment. We've already taken $487 billion out of the defense department. If you have these automatic defense cuts because of the super committee's failure, here's what Leon Panetta, our defense secretary, said would be the consequences. It would de decimate our defense. It would cripple us in terms of our ability to protect this nation. It would be a it's a ship without sailors, it's a brigade without bullets, it's an air wing without enough trained pilots, it's a paper tiger, we'd be shooting ourselves in the head, and our commander in chief is playing stupid games with the law. In January 2013, the pink, uh, the sequester, sequestration hits. That's right. Under the law, the companies have to give their employees 60 days notice, and if they don't, they have to pay them 60 days of wages. So the Department of Labor under the Obama administration is telling the companies you don't have to abide by the law. This is ridiculous. This makes Eric Holder look like a good lawyer. Wow. That's strong language there, Senator. Well, it's a strong, dumb thing we're doing. And by the way, my party has their fingerprints all over it. It was the Republican leadership who agreed with the concept. If the super committee failed, let's have decimating of the Defense Department as one of the consequences. The party of Ronald Reagan would never allow that to happen. Here's my solution. If the politicians fail to do what's right by the country, fire the politicians and keep the soldiers. Oh. Well, just yesterday, I think the White House said that the military personnel will be spared. It's well, su suggesting so. that the cuts will come in other areas, right? I guess the yeah, equipment well, yeah, or, yeah. or research, yeah, right? Do I have that correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, you do. This is bizarre. The commander-in-chief of the United States, who has the ultimate loyalty and responsibility, is having his executive branch say, ignore the law, you don't have to issue these notices because it would hurt my re-election. And by the way, we're not going to hurt any of the soldiers. Well, how can a soldier go to war if they have no equi equipment? Remember World War II? After World War I, we decimated our defenses and you had to train with broomsticks and cardboard. So what good is it to have a bunch of people sitting around without equipment? If sequestration goes into effect and you can't do anything to the personnel side, that means means there are no modern weapons to fight the war in the future. There will be no stealth technology. All the old, old stuff stays around and there's no new stuff. It's the dumbest solution in the world. Every Republican and every Democrat owns this. We should be trying to fix it. And I've suggested fix it for one year. We can't do the whole 10 years between now and the election. F fix it meaning, meaning extend it for a year or, no, no, or make no, major revisions? Make find alternative cuts in the budget. Beginning in January, 55 billion comes out of the Defense Department on top of the 487 billion we've already cut. Find ways to uh, help the Defense Department save them from these devastating cuts. Look, work together to find savings in other areas. There are some dollars you could still find in the, uh, in, in the defense budget, but sequestration destroys the Defense Department. It starts in January. Let's find a one-year solution. Let's work together to take the first year off the table so the next Congress can deal with this responsibly before we set in motion 1.1 million layoffs I, in the I private I, I wanna, sector. I want to bring you back to some of your more serious charges here. And that is that yeah. you're saying the White House, the president, is urging defense contractors to disobey the law? But because uh, if there is a 60 day notice required, that would mean what, the 1st of November? Because if the cuts are going to be enacted on January 1st, that's when the notice would go out that people would be laid off, correct? And if that's the case, that's about five days before the election. That's a critical crunch time. There are some states that require 90 days notice. Be clear as to what Lindsey Graham is saying about this White House. Their legal reasoning in the Department of Labor advisory opinion makes no sense. Unless the law is changed, you're required to issue the Warren Act notices. 
January is the drop dead date. They're saying that this may change. It's possible that it might change. Therefore, you don't have to issue the notices. That's crazy. Any company that doesn't be, follow the law. What would be the strategy for such advice? Why would they? I think I don't. Oh, there's only one conclusion. They don't want the layoff notices to hit right before the election. They don't want this administration to be held responsible for 1.1 million Americans in the defense industrial complex losing their job because the Congress and the White House jointly have created the dumbest idea in the history of a Congress known for dumb ideas. They don't want to to put the public on notice. You should be doing a show. I'm not, if Roger Ailes is listening, how about doing an hour show on sequestration? Tell the public what happens to the finest military in the history of the world if we let this begin in January. So their Department of Labor reasoning makes no sense legally. I think it's politically motivated. And you can exempt personnel from this because if you do that, then you have nothing to fight with. Senator, thank you for your time. Our